Hi guys, it's Sam and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fun. Today I will be using the new Knit Picky Paper Pad set, the Ugly and Bright Stamps and Dies, the Flippy Flappy Die Set, and then I couldn't decide if I was using the Snowflake Background Stencils, the Snowflake Trio Stencil, or the Snow Flurry Stencil. And, uh, spoiler alert, I don't use any. <laughs> Typical me. <laughs> I had grand ideas and um, I actually tried them out. You'll see a bit of it in the card later or in the video later, but I don't end up, I don't like how it looks, so I went a different way. Anywho, I started by stamping all of my images onto uh, Strathmore mixed media vellum surface paper and then I heat set the ink to make sure it was dry. I am spritzing some water onto my craft mat and getting my water brush nice and damp. And I am going to do some water coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. As always, I start by adding a base layer of the lightest color I'm going to use. Um, and then I pull it out with a water brush, use my darkest color and then the light color again to bring it out. and. That's basically how I color most images. Sometimes if the image is uh, very big, I'll use you know three colors or, or you know change it up. But for the most part, I start with the light to give it a base and then I bring in the shadows with the darker color and then pull the darker color out with that you know middle color. Um, obviously, <laughs> these little critters are getting pink cheeks because they're playing in the snow and it's winter time, <laughs> so they're gonna be a little bit, you know, windy. It's gonna be windy and cool. I think these <laughs> tacky Christmas or tacky holiday sweaters are hilarious. And I, when I was looking at which sweaters to use for which critter, I was like, oh my gosh, the Rudolph the reindeer has to have Santa on his sweater. <laughs> because I know we all love Santa, but who is Santa's number one fan if it isn't one of his reindeer, right? <laughs> so yes, the reindeer is definitely wearing the Santa sweatshirt. Oh, for the bear, I wanted to do brown, but I didn't want it to be the same brown as the reindeer. So I actually started my, with my darkest color. I used black and then I used a medium brown to pull out the black. So it's, it was kind of fun and new for me, <laughs> but I really like the, um, you know, the, the shade of black here. Um, I mean, brown <laughs> with the black shadowing color. Um, let's see. Oh, um, the forest ugly sweater. I knew I wanted to do in greens and then I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> what color do I do the middle? And so then I, I started with yellow. So here I am, I'm using yellow. As everybody knows, I use brown as my shadow for yellow. And um, look, yellow and greens looks really nice, right? I wasn't sold and I will go back later <laughs> and just do a quick wash of green on top of the rest of it. But um, onto my fox, I, you'll see I did use a, like a medium shade of brown before I'm using the oranges just because I didn't want it to be like bright Valencia orange <laughs> fox. I wanted it to be a little bit muted so that's why I use the brown first. And then I'm just using really light grays for the whiter areas and then of course pink cheeks and a little pink for the ears. And I think here is where I go over the sweater with, yep, I just take a green marker and color it all. <laughs> <laughs> which the shading still held from the yellow, so it was fine, and I do like that much better. And then the grizzly bear is going to be wearing this snowflake-themed sweater. Um, I'm using blues and teals to color it in, and it's almost a little rainbowy, and I kind of like it. <laughs> I ended up using like the lightest shade blue I had for those stripes in the snowflake, and um, I, then I colored the hat to match. I don't end up using the hat, although I do think it's adorable. And I had planned on it, but I, I don't end up using the hat. And that, that's the coloring, super easy. And then I just did some heat embossing for the majority of the sentiment. I used black licorice cardstock and the white embossing powder from Lawn Fawn. 
I stamp my image, or I mean my sentiment, and then I'm heat embossing it, and like magic, it is done and perfect. <laughs> Okay, here's where we're gonna do some flippy flappy interactive stamp set action. I have a piece of cardstock I cut down to three and three quarters by five inches. Then I die cut some acetate with the like flipping mechanism die and a little strip of white cardstock that we'll use later and then the pull tab. I die cut from some heavy 110 pound cardstock. Then I'm going to use the main part of the flippy flappy die. I am just lining it up in the middle of my card and I'm so sorry that it is cut off on the bottom, but it is just lined up at the edge of the card. It's not going over it and it's not above it. And this is how it is cut. And it puts those little folded edges and I am doing what Kelly Marie did in the intro video with Flippy Flappy, and I'm just writing front and back on both of these um, pieces of paper that were die cut so that I can, since it's my first time <laughs> making a Flippy Flappy card, I wanted to make sure I didn't get confused myself. <laughs> and I'm just using a bone folder to fold along all five of those score lines. I'm folding them all front and then flipping it over and folding them all back so they get nice and used to being folded. <laughs> then I'm putting the top flap where it is folded, just, just one little segment through, where the, so you can see the back and the back line up. I'm using my bone folder to make sure that it is just one through. Then I'm going to tape on the flap pointing up. I'm gonna put some very strong adhesive right along the flap pull off the release paper and then fold the flap over the die and press it down with my bone folder. And that is going to, that's it. <laughs> that's the easiest, you know, hardest, hardest part, easiest part of the die. That's it. So fun. And then I'm going to take some foam tape and double it up. So it's two, it's stacked on top of each other, two layers and put it just at the edges of this card and the back. And as you can see, still moving, <laughs> plenty of moving. And now I am using a sheet from the Knit Picky paper pad. I'm also using some peacock feathers and blueprint sketch to distress ink a little bit on the tops and in the corners. Then I try splattering some water to give it a little snowy effect. And it was good, but I wanted a little bit more contrasty. So now I'm gonna use some white acrylic paint and just splatter that on too, to give it the effect of like a snowy afternoon, you know, against that pattern paper. I love adding distress inks to pattern paper. Okay, that's my card base. And now I'm gonna use some white wood grain cardstock as the background of my card. I'm just going to attach it to the card base. Uh, my tape runner stinks and I had to go to glue. <laughs> so I'm just gluing it down and then I'm gonna use that little notch die from the Flippy Flappy um, die set. Line it up along the edge of the card and die cut it out. And that's just gonna give you a little place for your thumb so it is an easier way to pull out the Flippy Flappy die, the Flippy Flappy mechanism when it's lined up. I pulled off the released paper, off the double-sided tape, attached it to my card. Now I am adding tape all around, not on the mechanism, but all around, putting my background on top of that, and voila, it flips. <laughs> I attached my acetate little um, connector and the white strip that will hide it and make it look a little bit less, a little bit more polished. More polished is the answer. <laughs> I did struggle a little bit, but um, <laughs> I won. I beat it. <laughs> um, now I'm going to put the whole card together. As I mentioned, I was really intimidated by the flippy flappy die at first. I was like, I can never do it. I am. It was so easy. <laughs> Literally two dies and you basically have it done. It was so fun. 
Um, okay, now I'm showing you the sweater for the fox, which is going to go on the acetate. I die cut it out three times and layered it up because everybody says the more weight that the flippy flappy die has, the stronger and the easier the pull tab and the mechanism will work. Since I'm only flippy flappying <laughs> the one sweater for the fox, it was going to be really light. So I triple layered it up to add a little bit more weight and it works perfectly. It's not too thick and it has enough weight that it actually works. I just uh, glued it to the acetate, trimmed the extra acetate, and look at that, boom! <laughs> Now he's dressed for the party too. I think that is so fun. <laughs> I um, used a little bit more of that same pattern paper I used for the background and I'm gonna die cut out the uh, little arrow that's going to indicate to the recipient to pull the tab. I decided to go ahead and add the distress ink as well to match the top part of the card and I'm just going to glue that to the bottom of the pull tab. And now we're officially done, people. Look at that. Easy peasy. <laughs> I am going to flippy flappy that little sweater on. It does get stuck in the in the beginning there, but then it's it's ready to go. Look, flip flap. <laughs> so fun. I literally could do it all day. And I think that's so fun where it's like eat, drink, and be tacky. I can just see him like bam in his little, little tacky sweatshirt. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you have a great day. Be sure to check out the card on the Lawn Fawn blog. Bye!